Hi guys, my name is Justin, G0KSC of the G0KSC website and also in of antennas. It has been a while since the last video and I apologize for that. Uh, one of my New Year's resolutions is to get a few more videos online, uh, which hopefully will help you guys with your antenna experimenting and understanding. Uh, the first one, actually, this uh, video is going to be focused on 2 meters and 70 sems dual band Yagi's. I've mentioned in a previous video that uh, the probably the most commonly asked question was do I need a ballon? And probably the second most common question is do you do 2 meter and 70 sems dual band Yagi's? Now um, when I say that I don't and I don't produce them or, or design them um, there is some puzzlement sometimes on the basis that there are, as you probably know and have seen if you've looked at either of the websites, a number of different dual band uh, Yagi's that are out there um, that, uh, that I have, whether it's um, 2 metres and 4 metres, uh, 6 metres and 4 metres, 10 metres and 6 metres and so on. But this doesn't um, mean that every single band is, is ideal and what I want to do is to go through the reasons why. Firstly, when I set out into the realms of design and antennas, I didn't want to produce anything when manufacturing that I wouldn't be happy with using myself. Uh, and that meant even if there was a market requirement, um, and regardless of whether the understanding of why that would be good or bad, I wouldn't produce it. Because I want people to, to come back and, and look for more antennas rather than be disappointed with one uh, that they have, which doesn't meet expectations. So what is it with the 2 meter and 70 sems Yagi's? Now the first thing that we need to consider is that 2 meters and 70 centimeters have a third harmonic relationship. So what this means is that in um, when the two antennas are being shared or, or, or sharing a boom, uh, 2 meters in this instance when you have a 2 meter 70 sems, the elements will conduct whilst 70 sems is in use. That's not going to be in reverse, so when you're using two meters, the, the 70 sems side of it will um, be relatively unscathed and nothing will be untoward with that. But uh, the reverse, it's not uh, necessarily the case. So to give an example here, what I've done is I've got a, a, a small two meter OWL or OWA optimized wideband array split dipole 50 megahertz sorry 50, 50 ohm impedance um, yagi with uh, a 70 sems one uh, laid in between there now one of the reasons that uh, it's so close and the, the feed points are here is for, for demonstration purposes and because uh, what we would ideally look to do as i do with most of the dual banders is to have a single feed point there is a reason for having a single feed point and not having two um, feed points. And there is a reason that when people are making two meters and 70 sems Yagi's that they put separate feed points on there. But what we'll cover later is why that's not such a good idea. So firstly on this, um, we've got two sources uh, and the sources are where the antenna is fed. So typically you would um, be feeding the the two meter side of the antenna. So if I go to 144 megahertz, uh, and these uh, are um, identical antennas, one optimized for 70 sems and one optimized for two meters. So this is how the two meter pattern looks and that's how it should do, you know, 20 dB front to back, as you can see down here, and 12.15 dB forward gain. All good. So if we now go to 432.2, and look at the pattern and what's happened. And excuse this, this warning here, this is because it's saying that for 70 sems, the two meter elements, the space in between the segmentation is, is uh, um, not ideal. Um, but this is uh, just to really give a, an indication as to how things will look. So you can see how things have changed somewhat. This pattern should be very similar to the one on two meters. Uh, and one of the common traits of a two meter stroke 70 sems Yagi that you will hear from people that have had them is that they have to offset the beam heading um, quite often offset the beam heading from two meters to get a signal and this is the reason why you end up with 
this flower petaling of the, the, the main lobe. And often this main lobe can be less or lower than the two side lobes. So what is it that's causing that? If we look at the two antennas here, uh, and we we'll zoom in a little bit, the black lines of course represent the elements of the antenna. Now if you have a look at the, the, uh, the pink lines, these pink lines um, represent current distribution through the elements. So when we go back to 144 and press uh, the plot, I'm going to take that away for a moment, and you can see the current distribution through the two meter elements, it's nice and high, um, but the 70s ones, there's no current distribution, it's very, very low, hardly anything at all, and that's why it doesn't make any difference to the, uh, the two meter pattern. So let's go back to the um, 70 sems again and press um, play and this is what uh, what occurs. You can see that the 70 sems ones have got nice large amounts of current in them but you, can you see the, the three lumps on the two meter elements which is the, 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 um, the, the caused by the third harmonic so you can see that they're carrying current and this is the reason for the pattern uh, distortion on 70 sems. So what we can do, one of the ways to alleviate this or to overcome that is to feed them separately. So if I feed now the 70 sems only, so I'm now feeding the feed point, that's represented by the little red line there, and press again. You can see that the pattern is a little bit better it's not where it is, it should be 20 dB front to back and 12 and a half forward gain. Um, but of course, although you've got it to a lesser degree, you've still got the, um, the current being conducted within the two meter elements. So what else can we do to alleviate that? So let's have a look at another example that I've got here, which is example number two. And what I've done with that is I've shifted the 70 sems Yagi effectively further up the boom. Now, um, in this instance, if I now press the go button, um, I've still got way, way down on what I should have in terms of performance. But um, in this case now, if you look at the, the representation in terms of current in the two meter elements, it's only these directors um, that are, are sort of in the combination area, which you've got some real higher levels of current, but you can still see on the second element here um, that there is an amount of pickup of current in these two uh, rear elements as well and everything else along the way, so that's causing that a problem. That wouldn't be uh, really practical because of course if you wanted to have a 2 meter 70 sems Yagi, you would probably want to use the full extent of the boom, wouldn't you? So in that case you would probably have something like this, the third example, um, which is a 12 element on 70 sems that's overlaid with a seven element. So that's, um, you can see that they're all combined again and we have the source on this one is on the two meter one. But of course, when I, I go to the 70 sems pattern again, it's really not very good with six dB of gain um, but of course, if I um, look up at the, the current distribution again, um, it's the current is being picked up in the two meter 70 sems, or in the two meter elements. Again, if I change the source in order um, to go onto the, the 70 sems antenna, then um, the current distribution will be less in the two meter elements and there won't be such a distortion on uh, the 70 sems pattern. Still 5 dB down on uh, the uh, front to back that it should have and quite considerably down about 5 dB in forward gain as a result of the interlace. And you can see here that you still have got some pickup in the two meter elements, although it's not now severe or as severe. There are some other things that you can do. Um, for instance, these elements could be offset above and below the boom. So you've got, say, the two meter elements below the boom on insulators, the 70 sems elements above the boom on insulators, 
and that will help uh, remove the problem. Um, however, it's not going to be completely removed um, in its entirety. But the biggest problem, although you've reduced the amount of impact by having the dual feed, um, the biggest problem is what you can't see in a software model. Now, as I'm sure you can appreciate, if you've got two coax feeds coming from the same antenna where the, the elements are in close proximity, you are going to induce current of some description at some level into the secondary coax, which is not um, currently in use. And best case scenario is that you end up with RF in the shack. The worst case scenario, and this is unfortunately what uh, a number of hams have um, experienced so far, is when you're using 70 centimeters on an antenna like this, and because of the third harmonic relationship and the conducting of the two meter elements, you induce current into the two meter elements at a higher level than you would otherwise do with other band uh, combinations, um, which means that there's a, a higher level of current which goes down the, the coax cable. And in instances where you're using a lot of power, say for instance with a, a linear amplifier, then serious damage to the radio at the other end can occur. Uh, and as I said, there's, a, there's several uh, UK hammers that um, I've spoken to who have um, acquired amplifiers for 70 SEMs, used them on a dual band uh, Yagi like this on 70 SEMs, and blown the two meter side of IC 9700s uh, to pieces as a result. So uh, whenever possible, use a single feed point for a dual band or multi band antenna because you remove that problem. And secondly, try and stay away from bands where they have this third harmonic relationship. Uh, and if you can, use separate antennas in those instances and your experiences and results will be far better. That's it for today. Hopefully that was of use to you. And until next time.